Hey everybody, Joe Casaboni here and welcome to another episode of The Profitable Podcaster. Today's episode is the first in a series of episodes throughout the year where I'm doing a coaching call. I'm doing coaching calls with podcasters who want to become profitable. And today I'm talking to Aaron Lee. Aaron got his start in radio and then pivoted to podcasting in 2020. We discuss a few things, but we focus around how to improve your podcast process, how to improve the show notes page, whether we should have full transcripts, and the all-important question, how do we turn our podcast into lead generation for consulting? So listen in. I think this is a great conversation between Aaron and me. I hope that you enjoy it. Right, I'm here with Aaron Lee. He is, he is the owner of New Generation Leader, which is also the name of his podcast. Aaron, how are you today? I'm doing great, Joe. How are you? I am doing very well, thanks. Thanks for coming on The Profitable Podcaster. Uh, so for those of uh, you listening who are new uh, on The Profitable Podcaster, I do some coaching calls with podcasters to try to solve uh, their their biggest problem facing them in podcasting right now. And uh, maybe their biggest hurdle to becoming a profitable podcaster. So, uh, Aaron, why don't you tell us a little bit about your podcast, where you are in your podcast journey, and then we can get into uh, the biggest problem uh, you're facing with your podcast right now. Yeah, that's great. So my podcast is The New Generation Leader. It's got the same name as the brand name of my company, a consulting company yeah. in leadership development. Uh, it's also the title of my book. Um, nice. so around the time I was working on the book, developing the book, I was also invited to a launch in right in the midst of COVID, a new online international business radio station was getting started really spearheaded by two folks here locally in the mid Atlantic. And so I jumped in early on and had a weekly one hour radio show on their platform. Nice. And as I dove into that. I loved it. I loved getting on the mic. Um, it's kind of the, the best of both worlds. I've, yeah. I've always worked a lot in, in media, mostly behind the camera or behind the scenes, but it was fun to bring my voice into uh, the radio station, help it get launched. I was in, it was my domain to figure out what the radio show was about every week to come up with themes. Um, and after each quarter was a season. After about three seasons, I realized the timing, when my show was slotted in the day, having to be on specifically, you know, there's no editing after the fact because mm -hmm. you're, you're going live on air. Yeah. I thought, you know what? I think I should shift gears into podcasting. And so I, I did that, flipped the switch. Um, I'm about 30. I've recorded... 30 episodes, I think, of the podcast now, uh, post the radio show. And I started off individually, just talking myself uh, solo about issues that were coming up in, in leadership, things that I was discussing with clients and problems, challenges, things that were making the headlines. And over the last probably three or four months, I've started inviting guests on and having conversations and the last five or six interviews that I've done have all been actually with other coaches. So in okay. essence, with my competitors in some yeah. way, shape or form, uh, but also hopefully potentially some of them will turn into collaborators yeah. as opposed to competitors. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, I think just recorded episode 29 the other day. And so we're in this midst of what I'm calling the season of the coach, as I noticed that nice. trend coming to light. Um, and so hoping to shift gears in a new direction uh, in 2023. Um, but that's kind of where things are today. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. I love the transition from kind of radio to podcast, uh, a little bit more control. Like you said, I, uh, I don't do live show. I do a live stream, but like, that's very different and the energy is different and how you handle things is different. Um, that's awesome. And, and so, uh, it sounds like you've been, how long have you been podcasting? I'm sorry. Uh, it's several seasons now, you said, right? Yeah, so I think I shifted over to the podcast um, 
summer late 2021. Okay. So okay, cool. Um, coming up on two years, I think. Nice. Um, and so I I don't intend to ask like download numbers or anything like that. It's all different. I don't like to put a focus on that. Um, but I do want to ask you, what is the biggest? What's the biggest problem facing you right now? I think as I really get my rhythm down, and and one of the things that I identified, I think actually how I, I found you was looking at putting more structure into place. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of my business, I know I have some followers listening to the podcast that, because they tell me, yeah, um, and they say, oh, I'm, I've binged your podcast or I've been listening to all, all of your recent episodes, but I want to better build that bridge from mm -hmm. new listeners over into consulting. And so, uh, that whole kind of post recording, I've, I've got the recording down. I think I've got the content down. I think I've got a good, good plan of action for some new guests in the next 10, 20 episodes. Nice. But it's what happens after that from show notes to call to action, inserting ads and, and figuring out the best rhythm and consistency and coming up with that plan now. So that once it's time to pull the trigger, episode after episode, I'm just into a, a rhythm with some consistency. Yeah, that's, that's super important, right? That's like, I mean, I've been with my editor with the same process for so long that he actually noticed uh, that I forgot to include a cold open file. Um, and like he told me, so the way I'll just tell you the way I format my other show, how I built it is we record via Riverside. Editing is like my least favorite part of the game. So um, I hired an editor as soon as I could. Um, and he gets the, he gets my track, he gets the guest track, and then, uh, he gets the intro as a set. So like the intro with music. So you pe telling people about the show, but then I also record a cold open where I, I don't like grab a clip from the episode, but I will, um, basically talk about the episode and give them the hook right. that way. Um, and so he knows to do like my pre-roll. Uh, ad spot which is for my membership and then the cold open and then the introduction with music and then the episode um and so like having that process in place is really important i have a really um clear way of doing that now like an sop and uh that has that has allowed me to batch five six episodes at a time so like i'll spend a week recording interviews and then i can just kind of process them um so I think that's really important. It's smart that you want to do that. Um, two two follow-up questions. Who is your audio host? And do you have a plan for making money? Because you mentioned ad spots there. Yeah, so um, podcast host is podcast.co. Okay. Um, and I, I got onto them because the radio station was hosted or um, – being broadcast through radio yeah. CO. So um, I just bumped my, actually had my podcast technically during the radio show to, okay. to archive some of those episodes. <laughs> um, in terms of profit, I'm thinking, I think my primary ads will be kind of internal focus. Like you just yeah. mentioned for your membership. I think the ad will be, um, and I want to figure out the best rhythm. Do I do the same one consistently for a certain period of time, having a, a natural next step? What is that first offering? And I've, I've thought about, and I've sketched out on my whiteboard for the year, you know, on a quarterly basis or a monthly mm -hmm. basis, here's my focus on social media. Here's my focus on podcast call to action, what I'm inviting people to just to make sure because I know personally, I have the tendency to shoot from the hip and go all over the place. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and not absolutely. have consistency, and knowing that that confuses people. Yeah, I totally get that. Um, so I'm looking at podcastco dot uh, co right now at the features. One of the features they have is um, they're calling it intro and outro placement. Um, I call it. I use Buzzsprout. They call it dynamic content there. But you can record your intro and outro separately and then have it automatically 
they say stitched, so I'll use that word, stitched to every episode, right? So as far as your call to action goes, um, I definitely would try to make it consistent. But like if you do have um, like a, a course launch or a webinar coming up, right? And you take advantage of the fact that these are dynamically inserted intros and outros, that's always good, right? So uh, for this show, um, now this is going to be a little bit meta because people are listening and they've already heard the pre-roll and I don't know what the pre-roll, I, it's possible I don't know what the pre-roll is, but um, usually it's for my podcast booster blueprint, right? That's like the right. main driver of my mailing list. I want to get people on my mailing list. When they sign up to my mailing list, they get put into a funnel a welcome sequence followed by a soft sell followed by an educational sequence followed by the hard sell um so i guess anybody who who listened to the call to action and signed up that's what you can expect um but that i think is if you're using your podcast to build your authority and your business i i believe that's the best way to go um because you're getting people onto a mailing list which is more your platform than any other platform out there and right. now you have a direct line to people on uh on your mailing list as opposed to like kind of hoping they listen and then write in or like tweet you or whatever social platform is in vogue when this episode comes out right sure. um could it uh, really could be anything at this point um so i think that your as far as call to action goes i would say make it you can do intro and outro, right? I say real quick before we get started. I always say that, so I, I can't make it the outro. Um, easy, I could stop saying real quick before we get started. But I really, right. I, it feels like a little like, hey, I want I want you to know that I got you. And I'm not going to take a lot of your time. Um, I usually script out about five sentences. Hey, real quick before we get started, I want to tell you about the podcast booster blueprint. You're listening to this podcast because you want to become a profitable podcaster. Let me give you the tools I use to be a profitable podcaster. Here's what you'll get. You can sign up at profitablepodcaster.fm slash blueprint or whatever, or the link is in your show notes. Um, And so that's what I would recommend. And again, that, since it's dynamically inserted, it's going to be added to every episode of your podcast, past, present, and future. And if you ever change it because you are doing a webinar and you think that that's going to be a good lead generator, you can change it. And it'll change on every episode, past, present, present, and future. So I think if you're going to do the call to, like, obviously it'll change it every week. Um, but, you know, keep one for a month. See how it does. Yep. Um, and then mix it up a little bit. But the dy- the dynamic content or the uh, fresh intro and outro uh, is a big feature. I would love to see more podcast hosts do that. I'm glad yours does. Um, so does that make sense for call to action? Absolutely. And I like, I like, I like things that are simple, nimble, lightweight, you just using that feature and, and being able to keep it fresh and not go all the way back through and doing these things manually. I've yeah, always said, let technology do the work for you. So this is a great way to do that. Yeah. And like, I mean, as we record this, it's easier than ever. Right? When I started, I started like 10 years ago, like none of that existed. Right. So like my call to action in episode one of my podcast is like, super outdated um yeah i also felt like since i had sponsors i didn't promote my own stuff for a long time i think that's also a mistake i think it's okay for you to promote your own stuff as well as sponsors um but i think i think that that's a that's a smart move for your call to action um show notes so i'll tell you kind of what i do for show notes i have a va who gathers them all but i want to make sure the links are right or like my affiliate links are being used when when appropriate Um, but I'll just, as I'm taking notes, if there's something I want to include in the show notes, I'll, I'll do like parentheses and then link in all caps. And then I or my VA know to look for that link. Um, more and more show notes should be more than just links. So what I'll do right after an interview, I'll do it with this interview. I do it with every interview. Um, I actually get a text reminder. Thanks to Calendly to do this. Like, cause I want to make sure I do it immediately is uh, I'll write a, summary of what we just talked about and the top takeaways and that provides my cold open for me and it provides copy for the show notes so if you go to how i built it and you look at any of the show notes it's the summary 
it's the three top takeaways and then it's pertinent links. Um, and I think that's, that's, um, I think having an accompany blog, accompanying blog post is best. I recognize yeah. that as solo podcasters, that's a lot of work for us to do. Um, and I, I had a service doing it for a while, but I stopped that. So I, I loved it. I just, I wasn't seeing a return on the investment. Um, and that was probably more strategy for me, but I think having a blog post is best in lieu of a blog post. I think 500 words with summary and top takeaways is, uh, is good to have for the show notes. People can read that, see if they're interested and then keep going. Um, so that's show notes. Uh, any questions there before we get to the, the big question about process. So do you, um, what's your take on including the full transcript? Yeah, that's a great question. I strongly recommend it. I, when I added transcripts to my show, I saw an appreciable increase in downloads and traffic to my website. Um, so that's like the personal benefit. Obviously the other benefit is more accessibility. Um, as far as including it again, it's, it's like, it's great these days because like with podcasting 2.0 and hosts, um, realizing the importance of transcripts, um, there's probably a way to include it when you upload, um, your podcast. Oh, podcast transcripts right here for, yeah. for podcast.co. Great. Um, I don't know if it has, do you know if it has a Descript integration? Do you know if podcast.co has Descript integration? I guess I don't know how you record your podcast, but. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good question. I don't remember. Because um, another thing that I like, what I really like about Buzzsprout too, is the direct uh, integration with Descript. And so you can publish and Buzzsprout will grab the automatically generated transcript and include that in the podcast episode. Um, so again, really nice. Uh, yeah. Podcast.co right here. Nice. I'm going to have to check out podcast.co. It uh, looks like a really good host. Um, so uh, yeah, what you could do again, I, for my main show, I do pay a transcriber to right. do the transcripts. She does a phenomenal job with formatting. She includes inline links. Um, I don't even have to review them anymore. Like I just, I, I take what she gives me and I put it uh, on on my website. Yep. Um, now for, for how I built it, I don't include it in the feed. I include it on the website because um, I use WordPress for the website. And so, but you know your your host supports it. I would at least do the auto generated ones and include that. Yeah. Um, but if you you know if it's part of your budget, um, or you know you can take the auto generated one and then have a virtual assistant or someone you work with kind of like edit for content. Right. Um, yeah. They again, they usually the, spell my name wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet yeah. Uh, you know, that's funny because when I talk into my phone, well, for a while, it's learned now, but uh, whenever I would say, like, my wife's name is Erin, so I would say, like, uh, call Erin, or I would be talking to my mom and be like, oh, Erin's on her way. It would always convert it to Erin, uh, your name, That's funny not because my wife's name. mine always goes the other way. That's so my funny. Yeah. yeah. The great Erin Erin debate. Um, yes. Anyway, so. I guess the short answer is yes. I would include transcripts in some way, shape, or form. Um, I think auto-generated transcripts are better than nothing, but if you can afford it or it's part of your budget, um, then having somebody actually transcribe them is the best way to go. Perfect. Uh, And then for for process. Um, So how do you record your podcast, I guess, first of all? At the moment, I'm recording in StreamYard, so okay. very similar to Riverside. Yeah. It's recording audio, video locally. Um, yeah. Then at the moment, I'm sending them off to um, an editor to put those together. Um, depending on the episode, I go back and forth with the the pre-roll, the ending, yeah, outro, um, and how I do the open. 
Um, but send some combination of those files to the editor. They put it together. And then I'm working on streamlining the process. Um, yeah. How it, yeah, th- so how this it goes is, from there forward. Yeah. So this is something I've spent a lot of time on. Um, and I, I, I cover this pretty at length in the, in the playbook, the podcast left off playbook in the automation section. Um, but yeah, once I record my podcast, I get the files from Riverside. I put them in Dropbox and I always label uh, the folder as episode number dash guest name. Okay. Um, so I put, and then I, and then for each of the files, I do episode number dash host episode number dash guest. That makes it easier for my editor to see like which one is me and which one is just not me. Yep. Um, and then, like I said, I record a cold open based on that summary that I write. Uh, so I record that, I put it in there and then I have a text expander snippet. That is the instructions. Cause the instructions by and large are going to be the same. It's just the sponsor spots might change. Um, and then like how much editing we need to do. Uh, so usually as we're recording, I'll make notes like cut out the middle three minutes or like the cut out minute two through five, because they told a really long story about their dog that is irrelevant. Um, I, and I don't know, maybe people like hearing about dogs. Um, but so I'll do that. I put it all in Dropbox and then I move that folder to the needs editing folder. I lean on Zapier and Airtable pretty heavily here. When I do that, uh, Airtable gets updated to a status for the episode. This is why the episode number is really important. Because in Zapier, I match the episode number in the folder to the episode number in Airtable. And it updates the status to needs editing. And then my editor gets an email with the Dropbox folder. Um, So... He does that. He edits it all. Again, we've been together for a long time, so I don't even, like, I don't check his work. Right. Um, he uploads it back to a folder called Need, Needs Transcript. And from there, both my transcriber and my VA get an email saying, hey, this episode is edited and ready to go. My VA will upload it to my website. Uh, and then my transcriber will transcribe it and send over a Word doc, which in my VA updates um and so it's pretty hands-off for me but it's a combination of dropbox and emails and zapier um so i think that if we're talking about and this is something i built over years so if if i'm telling you like what's your next step as we come up on time here um i would probably what I did was write down the things I was doing, everything I was doing. And then I would mark them like uh, somebody else can do it or a robot needs to do it. Um, I have a very techie developer background. So that was like an easy switch for me. I kind of knew like what could be automated. Um, But for you, if you don't have that background, you or people listening, um, I would say just like something I don't need to do. Just mark, this is something I don't need to do. And then I would see what's taking me the most time. Mm-hmm. And then I would start to put together a process where I either automate or hire out based on that. So like for, number one for me was editing 40 minute episodes would take me like three hours to edit. And so I'm like, ease, I will easily pay someone like 50 bucks to combine these. Right. right. They probably have like, probably takes them 10 minutes and I don't care. Um, So that's what I would recommend. Right. And then again, with like emails or passing things off, uh, I would say like, is this something that I really need to do or, or can I hire a VA and say, um, yeah, every morning just check the Dropbox folder. And if there's something in there, do something with it. Or if you are comfortable with Zapier or make or whatever, say like, Oh yeah, I'll just tell Zapier to watch this folder and send off an email if something changes. Um, so I know that's really high level, but I think the big takeaways right, are make a list of everything you do for your podcast. And Mark, I don't need to do, I personally don't need to do this. I think you'll find that aside from talking, most of it you don't need to do. Right. So then 
pick the one or two most time consuming things and see how you can offload them um, within budget and other constraints that you have. Yeah, I think that's, that's very helpful. And I did, I had kind of 1.0 of that. What am I doing to post a podcast? I worked the other day on version 2.0 nice. and I like that. Um, there's an X factor priority and importance tool that I use with leaders to help yeah. them know what to delegate. Yeah. And it's, it's always important to use, use the same things I'm teaching leaders on myself and that uh, applying it to this very issue right here is, is the perfect application for that. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so, uh, you know, I hope that, uh, next time we talk, you'll, you'll be able to say like, Joe, I was able to automate these two or three things. And now I'm saving buckets of hours. Um, yes. Awesome. Well, Aaron, this has been great. Do you have any other questions as we wrap up here? No, thanks so much for the, the conversation and the insights. Um, I appreciate everything that I've learned from you uh, along the way so far and, and look forward to continuing to, I've always found it's helpful in, in leadership, in any passion, interest, hobby we have, what we can learn from people who are a few steps ahead of us. So I appreciate that you're a few steps ahead and passing that on. My pleasure. Thanks so much for taking the time. I love teaching. And so I'm happy with this opportunity. Um, if people want to listen to your podcast, where can they find it? The podcast is at newgenerationleader.com slash podcast or on any of the major, major streaming platforms, New Generation Leader. Um, sometimes it takes putting my name in there to actually mm -hmm. get to the podcast. Um, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N. All right, A-A-R-O-N. Uh, I'm sure you probably get that a lot. I'm really sorry. Never. <laughs> ne never get, no. Um, All the time. Yeah, it's definitely not in a new commercial I just saw recently. Um <laughs> Yeah, I will link that in the show notes. You can find all the show notes in your podcast player right now or over at ProfitablePodcaster.fm. Aaron, thanks so much for spending some time with us today. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Have a good one. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Aaron. I hope you learned something. Now, if you want to participate in one of these coaching calls, I am looking for guests. So you can head over to ProfitablePodcaster.fm slash ask. Send me a message. Let me know what is your podcast? What is the biggest problem facing you with your podcast and your path to becoming a profitable podcaster? So again, that URL is profitablepodcaster.fm slash ask. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Head on over to profitablepodcaster.fm for the show notes to join the mailing list and subscribe to the show. That would be super swell. And until next time, I can't wait to see what you make.